Yeah, go right to the thing. Without. Oh. Oh, we're up already. Yeah, okay, can you hear me? I think so. Go ahead, talk. So I, I just did. Can you hear me? <laughs> no. Okay, we're up. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Now you can hear me. Okay. All right. So, hello, everyone. I'm glad you can make it. Uh, we're about to start. I'm working on Autodesk Sketchbook today. Um, it's a great app. The best thing about it is that it's free. So, if you don't have Autodesk either on your tablet or on your computer, whether it's PC or Mac, uh, you can pick it up. It's, it's free. Just go to... Um, you can just Google Autodesk Sketchbook and you, you'll, you'll find it there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I haven't used this in a while. It was uh, my go-to uh, digital program for a long time. Um, and and uh, I went a long way with it. I, I bought other things and, you know, but I, I still like it. You know, it's just that um, over the years, I, I've, I've I, you know, I've, I've latched on to different softwares. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to use a model or a, um, a reference that's similar to one that I've used before. Uh, it's not the same reference, but it's a similar reference. I think the other one she was looking up, this one she's looking straight at the viewer. So it's a different pose, same model. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and also, I'm going to go ahead and start. Also, I want to point out that... Um, if you look on the top left over here, these first four um, brushes, I moved the brushes that I'm going to use right there. I'm going to limit myself to these brushes here. And um, also, let me just um, open up the toolbar for one second because I'm going to put in a color for the background before I start. And warm warm color so I'm just gonna fill this in fill that background in that's good enough and then I'll get rid of the toolbar also before like one of the things that people ask is um, what my image size is so this is according to pixels here but if you see down these are the pixel dimensions if you see down the document side, size, it's a uh, 14 by 10, so um, it doesn't matter. You know, I, I landscape works out fine here. So as long as it's at least 14 inches on one side and no less than uh, 400 uh, DPI, 400 pixels per inch, and um, that gives you a nice image that you know won't pixelate or, or anything like that. So. Um, that's what I'm going to be working on. Uh, let me see. Anything else before I start? Um, oh yeah. Uh, this, just uh, you know, I'll, I'll mention this periodically because it's going to be a while. I'm going to be drawing, but you know, there's super chats if you want to support this channel and, and so forth, and there's the emoji things, whatever they are down there. My wife Karen is here. She'll be reading your questions and letting me know. Uh, you know. Uh, anything that you've asked about. Say hi, Karen. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Okay. So I'm going to start. This brush is called the Dry Marker Brush. And I like it. It's kind of nice to draw with to, to start off on. I'm going to leave that layer where I, I, I put in the background. The reason why I didn't use the... Um, there's a layer for the background here on the very bottom. The reason why I don't use that is because um, whenever I save it, I, it, that doesn't seem to transfer over in, in, in the save. So maybe it, maybe it was something that I was doing wrong or whatever. So, but I usually just put that first layer as a, as a, um, as a, a color for my background. So let me go ahead and start. I've been working on a lot of uh, drawing. Also, these are the brush properties that sometimes I might get around to uh, playing with it. 
Um, this is basic, that's advanced. I, I don't tinker too much with advanced. I may play with the opacity of the brush and that's about it. So, okay, so I, like I was saying, I have been drawing a lot this past week and really brushing up on, um, and I hope I don't make a mistake after saying, or, or just do a really bad job after saying this, I'm really brushing up on um, drawing faces and um, and uh, getting accurate proportions. So that is what I'm starting off with. So I, I uh, start with the sphere, put down the center line, and then put a line. This is the line for the brow right here. And then I, I put I break this up into thirds. Alright, then I start putting in landmarks for um, where you know where the skull where things that you would view in, in a, a skull, like where her the eye sockets are. And right now I'm not thinking of I'm not thinking of getting a likeness of her. I'm thinking of getting the proportions correct. Okay, well, we have some people chiming in already. Sure. We have Anime Star. He says hello. Hi. Uh, Oslo says hi. Hi, Oslo. Is, uh -huh. is that because of the place, Oslo? Is that where you're from? Uh -huh. Well, we uh, are here from Maritza. Oh, she, okay. She says hello. I believe Maritza, if I'm not mistaken, is Columbia. She's from Columbia. Uh -huh. Okay, we have Kumar. Kumar is back. Kumar is back. We missed you last Saturday, Kumar. He said, hey, guys. And um, he said that it feels like we had this reference earlier. You commented about that. Yes, we, we did. We had, we had the, not this reference, but we had the same model. This is just um, a different position. This is a different position. That earlier reference, which was a few weeks ago, she was looking up. This one, she's looking straight at the viewer. So it's it's you're right. It's the same model, but it is a different reference. Okay. And then we have um, who, who, um, Gustavo. 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 Yeah. He who's says. He says hello, Gil. Hi, Gil. Hi, Gustavo. Who's, is it with a G, Gustavo? Yeah, G. Gustavo. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Now, this is about to get a little sloppy before it, I can, uh, but it, to me it doesn't matter. I can just um, fix things plus. These, these brushes down here, these two brushes next to each other, they're like blending brushes. So, I have, rather than use the eraser, I don't want to uh, delete the lines. I just want to clean it up a little bit. Makes the drawing a little bit dirty, but that's okay. All of this is going to be painted over anyway. So this is that, that thing I just rubbed out. That was the, where the hairline starts. Okay. okay. Well, Kumar asks, what method do you prefer, Riley or Loomis? Um, really, a mixture of both. Uh, I. I and you know what? I'm more familiar with Loomis than I am with Riley. Um, those ri Riley rhythms are a little complex, and um, I was I was really taught differently from both. I, w I was taught more to look at. I was uh, looking at 
masses rather than lines and, and construction lines and so forth. So I looked for masses of light and dark. It didn't solve everything, but it solved most things. Um, and um, so, you know, as I went on, I, I discovered Loomis and, uh, um, and later on Riley. But um, I think that um, for me, it was much easier to absorb Loomis than Riley. I think I, I you know, because I wasn't taught that way. I think I, I would need to uh, take a class or something in that, you know, to in order to, 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 you know, be more accurate about that method of, uh, um, of constructing the head or, or the figure for that matter. Well, Gustavo is letting us know that he's uh, watching us from Brazil. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. says um, you were talking about Riley or Loomis uh -huh. you know he said yes Riley is difficult he learned the basics but can't use it in actual drawings or reference you know what I, it's it's um it is difficult but um I, I've seen people use it that Riley method um if uh, one of the, the one of the uh channels YouTube channels that I like a lot is the um, the Watts YouTube channel Watts Atelier and Proco um, because that's where Proco comes from Watts Atelier they both use that that uh, both the Loomis and the Riley method um, Watts talks really about um, them carrying on the tradition of that um, Riley method and I, I you know in my opinion I, I they, they do great work, um, but it's one way of doing things. Um, there was, you know, people, you don't necessarily need, although they help. Uh, there, there were, there were um, for instance, Leonardo Michelangelo didn't know the Riley method, you know. But I'm sure it, it, it um, I don't want to sound ignorant because uh, um, I'm sure it probably corresponds to a lot of the things that they did. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I know if, if uh, you, you might not be able to tell whether this is a male or female at this point. But it does not matter yet. I'm more concerned with getting these uh, um, these measurements correct. Now you're going to see me open up a lot of layers like I did um, with the other programs. Um, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll work on a layer. Once I'm satisfied with what I wanted to do with that layer, I open up another one and continue to work. I will lower the opacity and uh, continue to work with that layer. So I got 
two brushes that I chose. Let me take this layer, however, and move it down. Or move this one up. All right, so I'm, now I'm working behind this drawing here uh, because I don't want to obliterate that drawing yet. I could um, open up another layer on top of it and just select from over here like a multiplier or something like that. Let me let me just do that real quick so you know what I'm talking about. I'll select like multiply and um, see I can uh, oops there we go and I can put color over it and I won't lose the layer underneath you know it'll it'll still remain but what happens is that when I want to merge the layer that's something like that will happen and I, I that's the reason why I don't use uh, multiply I'd rather go behind the layer and lay in some color um, that way so So I, I, I'm not trying to get too dark or anything like that right now. Just trying to establish the shadow there. Gustavo wants to know which paper do you use for the technique in gouache? In gouache, um, what paper? Uh, geez. In gouache, uh, I use. Uh, what was the last thing I used? Um, oh, okay. I used uh, um, the paper made by Stonehenge Legion. Uh, um, they make a, a nice 100% uh, cotton paper that I use um, and it's it's a very heavyweight paper um, I use something like that a heavyweight rag content paper it doesn't necessarily have to be by um, Stonehenge I just mentioned it because that's, that's the way I got I use a, a, a heavyweight rag paper and uh, um, by rag I mean it has like cotton or linen or something like that in it and uh, um, and uh, what was I going with that Which in a moment? I just lost. Okay, you lost the, um, uh, uh, the question. No, I, I, oh, I, okay. Um, I said I, I, I use a rag content paper, and uh, what you call it? As long as it's linen or something like that, and it's it's heavyweight. You can also use watercolor paper. Also, I like uh, paper that for 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 gouache. I don't like too rough a paper um, I would rather work on something that's hot pressed that's nice and soft you know but you know absorbed not slick surface like a, like a Bristol board or something like that okay that would be the same use for watercolor yeah it'd be it would be a hot press hot press only means like um, like it, this the surface of the paper that it's not rough but it's 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 um, soft it has a nice velvety softness to it. Okay. So. Now I'm going to open one on top of it and just put the um, the uh, what 
capacity to delay are really low. And I think I gotta slow down, I'm going too fast. Also, I'm you know, just a little bit distracted. I can go over the details because I'm not thinking of. Uh, I, I can I can always put those back in later, like the nostrils and th things like that. That's not as important as uh, making sure everything's in the right place. So, you know what, I was thinking about this, um, this live stream, and we want to be able to do this, you know, and to uh, be able to build this live stream. So, I'm, I'm interested in knowing when you guys come to this live stream, what do you, is there something in particular you're looking for as far as uh, something to learn, something to, uh, um, to what, like, what do you get out of this live stream? And I hope that you're also drawing yourselves, you know, um, using this time to use the reference as well. Um, but just curious, um, is, there, is there something that you're looking for that we can give you uh, on this live stream, you know? Uh, whether that by means of instruction, Introducing more uh, mediums, you know, and so forth. Okay, well, Gustavo had paid you a compliment. He said your large paintings among the most beautiful I've ever seen. Thank and you. I, I really admire your work. Thank you, that's nice to say. Yes. I'm in agreement with you, Gustavo. <laughs> things I like about um, sketchbook they have the brush puck they have the color puck but I, I like using the color editor and from here what I can do is increase the size or decrease the size of the brush kind of like that so I don't it saves me from having to do this unless I need something specific from that just want to use a bigger brush for right now to not worry about details. Okay, well, you asked um, for people to chime in as to what they're interested in seeing. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So, Maritza said um, it would be interesting to see a live stream with the watercolor or gua a gouache technique. Oh, okay. You know what, I want to do more of those, um, and I'll do them. The, the problem is that, you know what, 
with the um, you you actually see that the digital more clearly. I prefer to do traditional stuff. Um, I like digital. I think digital is great, but I prefer traditional. I, I just enjoy it a lot more. So I'm I'm with you. I, w I would love to do some more uh, gouache and watercolor. I like watercolor. Uh, and I'm talking about um, transparent watercolor, you know, as opposed to the uh, the the the, um, the gouache, which is uh, opaque watercolor. But um, I just need a, a a better camera setup. I can do it. It just does not look as good as I would like it to because you I won't be able to see the image as clear. Um, we did it. We did a few live streams that way. We did our opening live streams that way. That was really where I wanted to go with this. I wanted to do more of um, more gouache uh, and open it up to watercolor. We did oil at one time. Um, we would like to do some some just some pencil drawing. You know, I love drawing, just drawing. You know. I'd love to do more of that stuff and I plan to I plan to uh, you know once we can get going save up a little bit of money uh, get better equipment you know that that would be that would be a goal that would be a goal okay well Abdullah had made a comment uh, and he said too much lower jaw mass yeah, yeah, probably so. I think you're right. Bring up another layer. There's going to be a lot of corrections as I go along, because the um, whenever you do painting or drawing, it'd be nice if your first lines were all precise, but that's never going to be the case. The whole idea is that you put an approximation of what you see, and then as you go on, you keep making corrections. It's like working with clay. You uh, put stuff in, you take stuff out, and then you, until, until you arrive is exactly what you want. So this whole thing is going to go, like anything else, uh, is going to go through a series of corrections. No. 
no color coming out. Okay, well, we have someone richly Atala. Uh huh. This is awesome. Thanks for streaming this. Oh, thank you. Thanks for, for taking the time to watch.
like I'm losing it a little bit over here. make some corrections to my drawing which is fine because the neat thing about digital is that if ever I feel that way I lower the opacity I go back and uh, get my uh, drawing instrument oops it's too big Still too big. Okay. And um, let me just see. And I try to reestablish the drawing. The way I do it is really by looking for um, the landmarks of the skull underneath. Again, reestablishing where the eye sockets are, where the cheekbone might be. And because the skull is what gives structure to the head. Okay, I remember from last time. Oh, do you remember that? Yeah. I okay. Uh, they say, glad to see you use a sketchbook. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's been a while since I've used this program, actually. talking to myself because of yeah you're speaking low I'm speaking low I'm talking to myself I'm saying uh, I'm telling myself what I'm drawing uh, as I'm making these corrections on my drawing to get the shape that the hair is rather than worry about drawing every strand okay let me see this goes down here this connects up here I think that is a better
would think more like an Ella Prima painter and think of painting this in broad strokes. brush kind of like I would started the painting over again because there were so many corrections I needed to make Okay, well, I'm wondering if this person mean Mighty. I said Mitty Mouse, but I wonder if you really mean Mighty Mouse. Um, well, anyway, he asked, what is your favorite art app? Um, probably right now would be um, uh, Rebel. dark areas to
Well, um, Mighty Mouse. I almost bought Rebel, but I seem to be doing more on iPad mobile. Mm -hmm. So I'm hanging on with Art Rage. Art Rage? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Okay, he said, yes, mighty. I should change it. Okay, I'm going to call you Mighty Mouse then. Okay, well, so far, that paid off as far as the corrections. So far. Well, this is really taking shape here. I want you to know that from the image I'm seeing, it's really taking shape. As you know, as the um, painting progresses, sometimes I I I, uh, I play around with the opacity on the layer I open up, and it's all, not always the same thing or the same opacity. Some are a little bit more, some are a little bit less. Well, we have someone named Roth. Roth. Um, uh -huh. Hello for Cali, from Cali. Oh, cool. Okay. Just found your YouTube page yesterday. He oh. says he's brand new to drawing, painting, 
and really enjoy the content. Oh, cool. Cool. Glad to have you aboard. You said something? I said glad to have you aboard. Oh, okay. It's difficult for me about um, about digital is that I'm used to mixing these colors on the palette, and when I when I uh, it, it it's not always the exact thing that I want when I when I do it digitally. I have to find the color versus making the color. So I'm going to take a, a little sideline in a minute and um, talk about something that's, you know, I don't think it's unique to um, to Sketchbook, but Sketchbook is kind of cool in the way they set it up um, as far as uh, making your own brush, you know. And I'm going to do that in a minute because it's a good way if you don't, if you're not getting exactly what you want from the brush that you're using and you wish that the brush was a, a little bit different or can do uh, can, can get into areas that you're not able to for whatever reason you know that there's something that you can do so let me do that right now uh, so suppose I want to make another brush and I wanted to do something that this brush is not doing like I wanted to be able to get to nice details as well as um, you know use it more broadly um, uh, in a way that I like I like it a little bit softer and not not as hard as some of these brushes are so I'm going to select this brush the pencil brush now the the thing with the pencil brush is it can uh, let me open the properties. It can only go a certain size, and you can mess around with the opacity, but it's not, you know. But it has some nice properties. So what I can do is go in here, and you see the pencil brush because that's the brush I selected there, and it's uh, you know, it, it's selected. So over here on the right corner of this box, there's this little ring made up of dots. I can press on that and I have several choices. I can make a new brush or bring in a new brush set, copy the brush. So I'm going to make a new brush. And uh, this is the create do-it-yourself brush. So I'm going, it says uh, new brush new uh, base new brush on right uh, standard eraser marker so forth I'm going to and I'm say create and now you see here I have this uh, um, the brush right here now I can go into uh, select that brush go into the whoops wrong thing select that go into the properties and here I have my do-it-yourself brush. Now I have all the properties of the former brush, plus all of a sudden I can get it a lot bigger than I than I had before. 
so it, it for me this pencil brush makes nice uh, um, nice soft uh, uh, brush strokes so I want to use that so I'm going to move this over and place it over here let me see if I could huh okay I should be able to place it on the thing uh, maybe I need to take a brush out so alright can I take this I don't seem to be able to add it this is what I want to do maybe I can do it. Alright, it's not letting me edit. So I'm going to have to do it from here. So I'm going to just hide this down here. And now I'm using this brush. So, say, uh, just a little bit bigger. And I can, you know, it's a nice soft brush now. Can add it. Okay, well, Murph said he found you because of an old video using uh, Leonardo. Did oh. you did you use that? Yeah, that was okay. a while back, yeah. Okay, he said it doesn't seem like you still use it, true? Uh, I, I use it occasionally. I, um, I, I, like I said, someone had asked earlier um, what, what my preference is right now. And um, my preference right now is for Rebel. Simply because Rebel gives me like nice realistic looking... Uh, um, like oil and watercolor brushes and so forth and they look like traditional media you know so I like using it because of that I, I don't uh, on Rebel I still believe is a great program I just have not delved back into it in a while and it's funny I was thinking about Rebel just a little while like last night when I was working like you know I, I haven't used the program in a while and I still like it, you know. And I was uh, thinking about it in terms of, uh, you know, what what do what other programs I might want to use on this uh, this uh, uh, live stream, you know, like another like on another Saturday, I might use. I, you know, it might turn up. It might turn up. I might use it. it it's it, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a great program. You talk about. Um, Leonardo. Leonardo, yes. I'm talking oh. about Leonardo. Oh, okay. So, so I'm curious, was your interest in, in learning more about Leonardo or... You know, if you want to respond, you can. You can uh, just let me know if that was uh, something that you. Because you know, it, I wouldn't mind using the software. It, it's. I, I kind of have a different approach to Leonardo. Similar. I mean, I'm. I'm always using the layers like I'm doing now. But uh, it's a different software. I do different things with it.
Well, um, he did respond. He uh -huh. said, I'm new to all, to all of it. So trying to figure out which SW to invest the time in. Um, I'm on an MS Surface tablet uh, to several sites recommended it for for that. Uh, did it make sense what I just said? Not entirely. Not entirely? Okay. Let me... Okay. I'm new to it all. Trying to figure out what SW was SW. Software, I guess. Software? Okay. To invest the time in. I'm on a um, Microsoft Surface tablet. Okay. Yeah. And, um, and um, several sites have recommended it. Had recommended Leonardo? Uh, recommended it for that HW. What is that? HW. I'm not sure what HW is. But I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you this. Um, I got into digital painting. Uh, the first thing I did was I, I bought a tablet, and th that made it a lot easier to do. Um, and uh, um, this was years ago. It, 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 it opened the doors for me. Um, and it was something that I had not been able to do since then because... I had, um, I had, you know, just gotten my, my, my taxes done. I, I uh, had some extra money, and I came across a Cintiq, and I, and I, and I purchased it because I thought, hey, this, this is real cool. You know, you can draw, you can actually draw on a computer, on the monitor, which is what I'm doing now. Um, this was many, many years ago. And uh, so that's how I got my Cintiq. And that kind of started me down this path. And then I saw uh, I saw someone uh, use Sketchbook. Never heard of the program. All I knew before then were the Adobe programs. Uh, but Sketchbook was so cool because it was so easy you know it, was, it looked like it was it wasn't it wasn't difficult to, to, to maneuver around um, I you know I had used um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Photoshop and, and, and you know and, and Corel um, but when I saw a sketchbook it was it was like it, it was without all the, 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 the complicated um, the complicated uh, soft, you know, the complicated uh, um, technology. You know, I was able to learn more about digital by using this program. But as a result, I also was able to learn more about the other programs. You know, so I felt more comfortable after I got comfortable with um, with. Uh, uh, with sketchbook, I was I began to be I began to be more comfortable with the other programs because actually they're all similar. But the thing about sketchbook was that it kind of introduced you to it. You know, you you didn't have to worry too much about the technical side of it because it wasn't bogged down with a lot of that like these um, other programs are. You know, and you know, uh, um, the, the Adobe programs, great software, you know, good stuff. But when you're just getting into it, you need something that that you know that is good as far as a, a, a decent software, but at the same time, it's you know it's easy to use. You know, and I think that for me. Um, for me, Sketchbook really filled that. Sketchbook made it easier for me to understand digital painting, you know, and, um, 
made it less difficult and easier to learn. So if I were to recommend something, um, even though I don't use it as much now, I, uh, a great thing to, to start with is Sketchbook. And Sketchbook is, over the years, it got a lot more complicated. You know, competing with the, um, the other softwares, you know, it, 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 there's so many things that it does now. And it has tons of brushes. When I first started, you know, Sketchbook didn't have all these brushes. And, but it did have that do-it-yourself brush, which was kind of neat. Because when you couldn't find what you want, you just made it yourself. You know, which was a, a, a neat. And it wasn't complicated. You know, you can make your own brushes in, uh, um, in, in, uh, in uh, Photoshop. A lot of people do. A lot of people make their brushes and sell them. You know, you can you can buy them from other. You can buy the brushes that other people create, which is which is fine. But um, you can create your own brushes according to your own needs. You know, um, if you're more familiar, it's it's just harder to be familiar with the uh, um, with uh, uh, stuff on uh, you know on Photoshop. Because it's a lot more complicated. Well, he says, um, yes, that, you know, just to clarify, yes, several sites recommended Leonardo for the Microsoft uh, Surface tablet. Right. Leonardo's not a bad one. You know what? As a matter of fact, Leonardo might be what, in terms of the difficulty level, what... Um, what uh, sketchbook used to be because Leonardo doesn't have a lot of brushes either you know uh, what it does have it, it's you know works really well you know and uh, um, and it's low price it's not costly you know um, whereas sketchbook is free uh, but um, Leonardo doesn't cost that much either. You know, I think, what are you talking about? Um, 30, 40 bucks? Whereas, uh, you know, software is usually, you know, now they're all subscription based. You know, and, uh, um, and uh, Leonardo is not subscription based. So, that's a plus for you. Okay, well, Mr. Vic is with us. He oh, said, okay. He said, afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Mr. Vic. Yes. And if I'm correct, I think Mr. Vic is from Mexico and was uh, in Connecticut. Uh, but he's in Mexico now. If I have the right one. Well, whatever, Mr. Fig. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. Well, Mighty Mouse had said, I concur, Gil. I started with Photoshop and always felt so lost. I'm almost envied the new artists with the selections today. Yeah. Uh -huh. I use Art Rage and Sketchbook on iPad, but Art Rage only on Surface Pro 4. Okay. 
Yeah, Art Rings. I, 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 I had that program and I bought it a long time ago. Um, but the problem I always had with Art Rage is like um, too many bells and whistles. Too, uh, you know, it, it, it does great things, but you, you gotta jump through too, too much stuff to get you there. Whereas, you know, um, I prefer something that, that just really, it, it just, you know, just select a brush and start painting. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I think, I look at what other artists do with um, Photoshop, and I, I, I really appreciate what they do. I mean, whatever methods they use, um, you know, however they make their, um, their uh, paintings work, as long as it's working, I think it's great. Um, I just, for me, the experience of, of painting, I'd rather be able to concentrate on my drawing and painting rather than concentrate on getting the brush to do what I wanted to do. Okay, well, Mindy Mouse says you're exactly right. Uh, he was concurring with you. Um, but Art Rage is the only app that gives a painterly look. I think, yeah. yeah, I think Sketchbook is best with pencils. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I know um, it's really, you know, I would love... It would be great if they had, um, what's that app, uh, Rebel, or um, a tablet, that would be great. I, I, you know what, one of the things, I don't, I don't have a tablet, um, that's something that I would love to get, only to use uh, programs like Procreate. I, I've seen people do great things with it. I, I, I like what I see being done with it, but I, I don't have a tablet. Well, uh, Mindy Mouse said I did try Procreate, but found it to be too complicated. Oh, really? Too com complex, he said. Too okay, complex. So, so it's suffering from that same thing that we're talking about. I see.
how are you doing on time? Oh, okay. Well, it's right here. What time do you do usually? Um, about four thirty, four forty. Okay. Okay. Well, we're gonna keep going till about four thirty. And I've got to stop and the, sad, the weekends are my 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 time to make dinner. <laughs> so it's, it's um, I've got to feed the family. Yes. <laughs> my wife does it uh, from Monday to Friday, and I got the weekends. So I've got to get dinner going, and I, I know we we got to do it because. Um, if we don't do it, one of our sons will probably eat us. Oh, you don't find that funny. Uh, <laughs> you see, didn't I, find that funny. No, not, it, it, it was cute. Mighty Mouse has said, if you like Photoshop, you will love Procreate. I, I think Photoshop is good. Um, but like I said, I, I, you know, just too many bells and whistles. I want to be able to pick up the brush and paint and not worry about um, all that, that, that uh, technical stuff. I, I guess that's... It's, Part of me being, uh, you know, coming from a traditional art background, that uh, I really would prefer working something close to that, which is why, you know, like I said, I, I, I bought Art Rage 2, you know, um, when it first came out. I think what happened is I had a friend who, who uh, emailed me something about Art Rage, um, and uh, I, I looked into it. Uh, at the time, it was the only, I mean, Rebel wasn't out. It was the only software doing what it did, apart from um, Corel. But, you know, Corel was expensive, you know. You know, you can get Corel Essentials. Uh, it was all okay. But, um... So I, I, I did Art Rage for, uh, for a little while. But um, I, I, like I said, I, I, um, I did use uh, um, Photoshop. And uh, I do like it, but I don't know if I want to relearn Photoshop in another program, you know? So I got off of that pencil because after a while it makes everything too soft. And I need to have some sharp edges. Something a little bit more, um, more in focus.
that. Well, Mighty Mouse Ong uh, said, if you are an illustrator and use iPad, procreate this for you. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I hear a lot of people, a lot of people do like that program. Procreate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Mighty Mouse said, gotta run. Thanks for sharing. Hey, thank you for dropping by. Hope to see you next week. We have someone, uh, XDMC, XDMC, uh -huh. uh, said amazing. Oh, thank you. XDMC. Wow, okay. It is not looking like her as much as I would like.
do you think it's the lips? I think it's a type of smile. That's yeah. It. yeah. Well, it is a lot of things. Um, you know, it's well, one of the things. It's going to require more time than I can give it. Probably continue this later on after dinner or whatever. I think it's worth finishing. So I just have to fix the lips. Well, Maritza said, thank you. I always learn from your videos. A hug from Columbia. Oh, thank you. Uh -huh. Hope to see you uh, next week as well. We're going to close out now. So, uh, let me just. some quick things here before I close out. So, um, yeah, we're going to close out. Uh, there's a lot to still go over. It's not the most perfect thing here. But um, I'll probably continue this a little later on after dinner to myself. Because it's far from finished, but it's all the time we have here on uh, the live stream. And yeah, there's a lot of corrections I need to make in order to get it to look decent. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop because I can keep going, uh, and and the you know it looks okay. Um, it looks better than okay. Too. It do, it doesn't look like her, and there's a, a lot of things that I can change and correct in here, and uh, I'll probably do it. Like I said, I'll probably do it later on, 
but it's all the time we have here on uh, this live stream so it, it's it's not bad for what an hour and a half <laughs> yes an hour, an hour and a half's work you know um, so listen thank you for stopping by I hope again to see you guys next week if you guys have any suggestions I mean as long as you're coming and participating on the live stream go ahead and leave comments as far as what you what would you like to see or any things you would have questions about uh, leave comments below and uh, I'll definitely we'll, we'll look into them and, and uh, we'll look about you know adding stuff to our live stream uh, again uh, um, I should have mentioned this earlier but if you like this this, uh, this stream uh, remember to hit the like button it just helps us so that you know uh, more people will pick it up and see it and, and maybe they'll come and join us as well or, or if you like the video share it share it with uh, uh, a friend send it to someone or, or share it on your social media or whatever if you like the video um, so uh, thank you thank you for dropping by um, we hope to see you again next week all right Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.